Lana's insistence on lens flare. I tell you, some days it felt like he was trying to be the director. Honestly, you could see dust on the lens, so I'd just go and wipe it off myself. He would get so upset about it, too. Like my fingers aren't clean enough to wipe the lens. Cuts the lens. Speed is not enough to pass through that fan. Chance of death 100%. Retrieve the time vortex device if you wish to go any further. Searching. Time vortex device detected. Device in dangerous area. Nuclear ants everywhere. So, do we get any backstory on Dick? Why'd he travel to Gravoria in the first place? Did he do any research before landing there? Did he have a specific mission in that region of space? Patrick, Patrick, if you keep getting bogged down by the details, how will you ever learn to just sit back and appreciate the work of art for what it is? Store your paper mache props outdoors. They will get rained on. It's the law in this town, like Occam's razor or Stockholm syndrome, or I forget what it's called. It's my co-pilot's body! I... I believe that I can repair it. Oh no! I am trapped! Master Dick. Master Dick. Functions restored. Threat detected. Must eliminate. Fun fact! Hey, we actually had an actor inside the robot suit moving him around. I bet you thought it was an actual robot, huh? 
That's how good he was. No rest breaks or anything. Hardest working actor I've ever met. What a trooper. It was a shame we couldn't afford to pay him. And of course, since he wasn't on the payroll, I couldn't officially add him to the credits. But still, what a trooper. Wish I had a dozen actors like him. Dangerous radiation detected. No, no, we didn't use the same material for the toxic waste as we did the slimes. I mean, why fake something when you have the real deal available? We found a place where people were just dumping the stuff away for free. I was hoping the crew members handling it might get some cool superpowers from it, but no, nothing like that. Human slimes terminated. on me with great vengeance and furious anger. Oh, 
Oh, robot, you're all right. And you saved the day. You're, you're, threat eliminated. Looks like the Emperor's days are numbered. At long last, we have assembled our team. A lot of reviewers and fans, too, always wondered why we shot so few scenes with all three heroes in it together. I mean, we did our best to explain it. Something about the sleep chambers or staying back to protect the ape village. Really, it was just logistics. Jonathan had bowling league on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and, and Stacy had her karate Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Honestly, we almost never had all of them on the set at the same time. <laughs> Our robot actor was in some religion that only allowed him to work on Sundays. I'm still a little skeptical about that one, though. Sir, it's just a guy in a suit. Couldn't you have gotten just about anyone to stand in as the robot? See? That's why you'd make a horrible director, Patrick. His touches were subtle, to say the least. But he really brought a lot of character to the robot role. If he was so indispensable, how come he didn't list the actor in the credits? Well, let's just say it was an oversight. But I've learned my lesson. I only made the mistake six more times throughout my career. that no one ever got hurt, or worse, riding these things. Well, there was the actor we originally cast for Dick's role, but um, we don't talk about him. start to get a sense of how high up our heroes have been climbing here. Reminds me of how the crew always used to comment on how high everyone was. <laughs> Those jokers, they'd even say it when we were filming the grounded scene. And they all giggled like school children whenever they mentioned it too. So I'd make sure to laugh even harder so they'd know I was in on the joke. Whatever it was. I must make for higher ground.
beds back then. Props, walls, you name it. Then, you moved bits and pieces around and created whole new scenes. We were efficient. I adopted that technique to my wardrobe, too. If you mixed and matched efficiently, you could get by for years on only a handful of shirts and underwear. Something so invigorating and freeing about them, like sticking your head out of the sunroof while driving on the freeway. monster, always patrolling the shore, eagerly awaiting for his next meal. I designed this creature to reflect the human condition, always hungry, never satisfied, the bottomless pit of the beast's stomach. I don't know, you say stuff like that in interviews and your film always wins awards. Science fiction directors sometimes put the lens flare in on purpose. Why on earth? What's the next trend? Dead fly on the lens? <laughs> Jeez. Watch. You won't believe me, but you just watch. It'll happen. Some big shot will do it for one scene, and the following year, everyone will be doing it. Dr. Peculiar. Yes, your eminence. 
Release the Mechameleon! But only a minute. The Mechameleon isn't ready. What is the meaning of this? I thought he was completed. Geniuses. Never completed your eminence. Dad was just preparing to install a chainsaw on his tail. Enough! Your tinkering costs me precious gold and time. You do not have that luxury, Dr. Peculiar. Yes, your eminence. Releasing the Mechameleon at once. Ah, oh, Ludwig. Yeah, good old Ludwig. We cast an actual doctor to play Dr. Peculiar. Never again. Oh my god, he was a cranky old coot. May he, um, rest in peace. The costumes, the script, the creature effects, you name it, he wouldn't stop criticizing everything. Well, in his defense, I think he did have some early signs of dementia or something. He was always getting lost on set, forgetting his lines, making up new ones. Yeah, it was cute. Midway through a scene, he'd just yell, Her on my pills! <laughs> it was like a catchphrase. We almost left a few of them in. I have to say that the incredible job the animators did with the King Gorilla can only be outdone by their work in the Mechameleon. I'll leave further comments for later in the film, but this was truly an ep of a technique I use throughout the movie. Want to make a big scary monster look even more menacing? Put it in a dome. Monster doesn't look scary enough already? Put it in a dome. Want the audience to know when a monster really means business? Put it in a dome.
Just adorable. I was a huge fan of the old classic movie, The Flea, from 1958. So I created this monster as sort of a sort of an ama homage, ama homage, homage, um, uh, in respect to that film. I have the darndest time with that word homage. Probably should have invested in some training courses so the actors knew how to properly handle it, but instead we just let them flail it around wildly. You know that saying, it's all fun and games until someone loses an eye? That's true. And that's the story of why the Emperor wears that metal monocle. Greg was a real trooper about it, though. Didn't even seem phased that he'd have to wear an eye patch for the rest of his life. I think he went on to do some pirate-themed promotions at his used car lot once we wrapped up production. Already. <laughs> Got him. I'm installing photon lasers. What's I 
scenes together was enough to make your head spin. They weren't, strictly speaking, actors. Well, not in your usual sense. Ludwig here, or Dr. Peculiar, actually was a doctor. I think I told you that before. Uh, Greg, our emperor, well, that's a whole different can of beans. Our casting guy found him on a used car lot. Greg talked him into buying just a horrible car thing never ran oh then when he tried to get his money back greg just laughed maniacally so doggone it he offered greg the role right on the spot he said dan this guy is perfect <laughs> running out of extras and clay sculptures, but we needed more monsters. Oh, please, more monsters. So we had this brilliant idea. If you stick a puppy inside an old vacuum cleaner, wham, instant monster. Throw in a string of Christmas lights and it's camera ready in five minutes. And that had to be some kind of world record or something. Fun fact, boys and girls, cinematographers don't like it when you use their dog without asking permission first. But hey, to that I say, what goes around comes around. Little Buster here ruins so many shots barking all day long. You don't want me to grab your dog and cover him in Christmas lights? Well, don't bring him to work.
about at the altitude where Dick's rocket ship had crash landed at the start of the film. When I think back about all the work we did, building this darn tower and making models and costumes and sets and props, and then trying to keep it all straight during filming and not getting anything all mixed up, ah, uh, it's exhausting. Just thinking back on it is exhausting. I wish I could tell my younger self to just direct romantic comedies. It's the only way you'll get a good night's sleep. Rotating contraption things. We actually used Ferris wheel parts from an old amusement park. I think it was called Dizzyland. D Dizzyland? Isn't that kind of close to... Yeah, <laughs> and the courts agreed with you. They shut them down before they opened the gates. <laughs> well, it's their own fault, I guess. Well, naturally, my production team swooped right in and bought up everything they could get their hands on. So, I guess there was a silver lining to their legal battles. One man's lemon is another man's lemonade. Or however that saying goes. statue of the emperor is actually as big as it looks on screen. Yeah, we were gonna use a small model and green screen it, but then Greg offered to fund building a life-size version. He was planning on setting it up front and center of his used car lot. Apparently, he ran into some issues with zoning laws. Yeah, I told him he should just play dumb and put the thing up anyway, but he wouldn't listen. I guess that's why he's still running that same lot. Whereas I've been barred from filming in 12 different states. If I told you how much gold paint we used on these darn sets, you wouldn't believe me. We were originally trying to decorate this whole set in precious stones. I wanted that sparkling effect, but then my props guy shook his head. I've learned that when he shakes his head, it's best to go with plan B. Unfortunately, plan B meant a cement mixer filled with gold paint. Uh, it was so much hard work, even I had to finally roll up my sleeves, dive in, and call some interns from the community college. Man, there is nothing college kids won't do for free pizza.
word to the wise. When the guy funding your movie offers you a suggestion, stupidest idea ever is a phrase you should shy away from. have come here to end your empire and free these apes from your tyranny. <laughs> you? Tell me. Do you think I need these pitiful creatures to run my empire? Allow me to show you something. As you can see, I do not need those darn dirty apes. It is a kindness that I allow them to survive. I give them work so they believe their life as perfect. All I truly want from them is their gold. Gold? Ha! What gold? Have you not seen the result of Gravoria's planet-wide radiation? When living beings die, their bodies are transmuted into solid gold. The apes are useless. I send my minions to harvest more gold for my empire. You are a cruel, heartless monster. Perhaps. Perhaps.